Hey, welcome back to Bright Arrays. Uh, I'm just gonna spend this time together today just concluding our study on Malachi. Just a few things I wanna talk about before we put this book to, uh, to the close. So what are some lessons that we can get from this passage? Well, the warnings of the day of fire and burning is to cause fear in the hearts of the unconverted and to drive them to repentance, a godly repentance, and to drive them to faith in the one who has eternal life, who is Jesus. For those who fear God, the warning ought to drive us to serve the Lord more diligently and to guard our steps. If there's another day of fire coming, which Peter talks about, how the elements will burn and all that, there's a day of fire coming, so that's God's judgment. And even now, God's wrath is being revealed. Um, so we should take heed of that, especially as Christians. We need to be careful of that. We need to know the warnings. But as an unbeliever, the day is coming that you will be burned forever. And that is not a day you are looking forward to. Second, the promise of the Son of Righteousness rising with healing in its wings should bring joy to the hearts of God's people, especially since Jesus promised that God's people would shine like the sun in the kingdom of heaven. You know, we will be like that sun. And so he has brought healing. He has healed us from all our iniquity, all of our sin. That's the amazing thing. That he's set us free from all that. Number three, we should not doubt the justice of God, for the promise is that the evil will be like ashes under our feet though we may be persecuted now vengeance belongs to our god so we have to remember that that we don't take vengeance ourselves but we don't have to worry that justice uh, will not be uh, complete and won't be done we don't have to worry about that it will be just not now so justice will be done vengeance will be carried out against god's people against those who went against god's people and, um, yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. Even though it may seem like the good are getting all the bad, you know, the good are getting all the bad stuff, the bad people are getting all the good stuff, it won't always be like that. And uh, justice will be done. All sin will have to be paid for. And then the final thing is that, number four, uh, one commentator said, all who have not passed from under the condemnation of the law through faith in the justifying righteousness and blood of Christ shall be smitten with a curse. This awful closing word of the Old Testament should ever ring in the ears of the unconverted until they have found deliverance from the curse in the Savior who has redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse for us. Then shall we realize by blessed experience the closing prayer of the New Testament, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So I actually read that there are rabbis that were pushing to have that last section uh, move to a different part of the book of Malachi because they didn't want to end the book on <laughs> a word of judgment, which makes sense. But if you have the New Testament well, then the Bible doesn't end on uh, a note of judgment and condemnation or cursing. It ends with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So... It's very telling that that's the case. But that's that's the truth. So we see the Old Testament ends with the idea of curse. But then Jesus comes, gives us his grace. And so the book can end with the grace be with us all. Amazing thing to think about. So that's the difference between the Old and New Testament. But you see the continuity there too. And it's uh, blessed when you can see that. So that's the end of our study for this week. Come back next week and we'll begin the book of Colossians. We're going to do an introduction to the book of Colossians. And then the next several months we'll be digging through and mining out the gems found in that book. So come back for that.